thank you so much for coming. My special guest is Denise Valle, singer, songwriter. I'll tell you, Denise, this is how I kind of got into your music. Um, I really loved your new EP, You Drop, Edge. And last week, oh my God, I was having like such a moment because like my car had been acting up. But I'm driving down the street and I got the email from you this morning like, okay, here's the EP, check it out. It had been smoking the day before and it stopped in the middle of the street. I pulled over to the side of the road and I called AAA and they were like, okay, we're going to tell you. And I needed some music just to kill time, mm -hmm. walk to the liquor store, get something to drink. And yeah. I put on Walk This Road. Yeah. And it was just like so funky and so like able to like take me out of like, God damn it, how much is this bill for this car going to be? Yeah. Like, oh, this is a cool yeah. new artist I got to get into. I love that. Thank you for sharing that story. Oh, yeah, for sure. Off top. I found out today you were born in Hollywood, but you grew up in Alberta, Canada. Yeah, so you, you got it right. I was born in Hollywood, California. And um, actually, I just moved to Alberta a year ago in 2019. But I grew up in uh, Saskatchewan, which is a really close to Alberta, like a similar sort of prairie type of landscape. This is maybe the best word to use, so. Prairie landscape, okay. You know, I've never been to Canada yeah. and I feel like I really owe it to myself to go out there because like, you know, I get so many submissions from Canadian artists. Um, so tell me, Denise, like, what was it like for you growing up as a kid? Yeah, so I grew up in a really small town. It was like, 2,000 people, uh, mm. so really small. The size of an average person's high school. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah spending some time in the States uh, when people would be like, yeah, I'm from, from like a small, small place. And then they'd mention how small, but it was actually like really big for me. I was like, that's not small at all, you know? So I grew up in a small town just outside of like a larger city called uh, Saskatoon. And that's where I spent like a lot of my 20s and uh, early 30s. But I grew up in a little town called Rostern. So a town my parents immigrated from uh, El Salvador, actually, originally to California and then California to Rostern, Saskatchewan. So we have a little bit of roots in a few different places, which I think is like a really interesting thing. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm super impressed with like the cultural influence, you know, from place to place. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your parents are from El Salvador. Yeah. Originally. Wow, okay. Now, growing up with, like, a lot of different culture in your household, what kind of stuff were you into as a kid? Yeah, you know, I think, like, music always did really play a big part in, in our household. Music was always on, and I think, you know, anything about, like, Latino culture, dancing, music, food... All these things are just such prominent parts of like who we are and how we express ourselves. So I always just grew up with that being at the forefront, you know, my parents always encouraged like that expression, dance and, and, and creativity. And even if it was doing something super mundane, like cleaning the house, music was always, always like at a volume 10, <laughs> Make everything a lot better. And still to this mm -hmm. day, you know, I, my dad will send me like a bunch of tracks that he really loved, whether it's from like his era or just even other artists that he thinks might be fun for me to listen to. So growing up, you know, music was still always such a important part of our household for sure. Absolutely. Okay. So what kind of music was played in your household? Um, we had a really good combination of like Motown music to like, so we got your Aretha Franklin, your Stevie Wonder, you know, the Temptations, that kind of world. And then I had a lot of like Spanish speaking artists. So a lot of like Latin artists. So like music like cumbias and uh, even like rancheros and things like that. So I feel like a lot of music that was very like soul infused was in it, you know, whether it was like from a Spanish speaking like mindset or whether it was like, you know, the Motown, which I, feel like, I agree, have a lot of heart to it. So that is something that I always grew up with. 
and even just like the top 40 you know just like that kind of world okay okay cool yeah you know i feel like everybody who grows up listening to motown has this like good sensibility about them like i could tell you were raised right oh nice (laughs) that's it you just need that check mark (laughs) right yeah okay cool all right so uh at what point did you say like you know what i'm gonna really be a musician be a singer and then like at what point did you start to take it seriously yeah you know so I'll, i'll i'll say this like Growing up in a small town, you know, it's kind of felt like maybe there was two choices, like either you're like in the arts or you're in sports. And I really wasn't good at sports. So I fell back into the arts, but mm-hmm. happened to really love it and like it and and felt like, you know, there was maybe some gift or some talent there. So from like a young age, whether it was voice lessons or like choir or you know maybe a music competition like that that love of music just kind of grew and grew I'm at like taking it professionally and wanting to take it to that next level and not being like casual uh would probably be the last four four to five years I would say I, where I really took the dive in to want to go hey I want to make this my career okay and cool yeah, this project was really special just because it was a dream that I've had since I was 18 to do. And here I am at 34 completing that, you know. I was going to ask um, what if I was allowed to ask your age, but I'm glad you just threw it out there. Cause, but I let yeah. it, I just did it for you. Yeah, yeah. I like how you're open about that because I'm like, you know, with certain guests I have on here, male mm-hmm. or female, it doesn't matter. I'm kind of kid glovesy as the age question, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's totally fair. I like doing it sometimes because I feel like I know for myself, you know, there are struggles of like, oh, I should have done this by this age. And so I I think it's encouraging for people to hear, you know, no matter what age you're at, that 16 year old dream can still happen and doesn't lose its like value or specialness no matter at at what time you complete it, you know? Amen. Say that again, for sure. Um, Last question about like growing up um, in Canada, where you're from, are there a lot of like people of Latino descent? No. Uh, well, I, you know, I think for the small town that I was a part of actually would have been like a high ratio in the sense of like, so if you have 2000 people, the fact that you would have like four families. Oh, true. But, but no. No, in the 80s, there was a lot of like Latino uh, El Salvadorians who immigrated across the world. Um, mm-hmm. But in my community and in like the larger province as a whole, there wasn't a lot, a large Latino community. Interesting. OK, I got to like figure out how that El Salvadorian diaspora like made its way everywhere. Yeah. You can do a little research. You'll you'll see. For sure. Cool. Yeah. Tell me some of your, your like musical influences. Like who really made you want to? Who formed Denise's taste into like your style? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think with this album, you can kind of a little bit of like pop, a little bit of soul, a bit of R and B. You know, depending on the take. And that's true. You know, it's like taking a little chapter from each kind of book of my life so you know mentioning like that Motown that I grew up with or like the Latin music Mm -hmm. I try to sprinkle that in you know just showing hints of like my heritage so the track circles actually has my mom at the beginning speaking in Spanish to me telling me you know everything's gonna be all right so I wanted to kind of hint at that to my listeners as well as um, repeat affections had a little bit more of like a Latin beat And then also like the music video, you know, has my parents in it dancing, which I think is super fun. Um, But, you know, I, like I said, pop music really influenced me. Not going to lie. Loved my Christina Aguilera growing up. Loved my Backstreet Boys. You know, I honestly swear like. Such an era. Yeah, I I think, you know, Christina taught me to be really commanding. I, you know, think of her, yeah, you know, like that whole growl (laughs) Christina thing. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah. Christina that had that raspiness dish. that like. A little like I will, I will, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. I'll hone it back. But, you know, <laughs> seeing her in her vocal acrobatics 
And then also seeing her do an album in Spanish, I remember as a young teen being like, yo, that felt so special because I saw a lot of like Latin music was through my parents' eyes, right? But Mm -hmm. seeing one of my very favorite pop artists do an album in Spanish was so cool. And it made me want to like, learn all the lyrics and like I remember performing genie in a bottle half in Spanish half in English at like my high school talent show and you know that was definitely an influence and then you know I got introduced to like the Frank Oceans and the Scissors and the Lucky Day and the Yebas and all those worlds of just soul infused R&B and the Lauren Hills you know Jill Scott's these people who, those people really influenced me with feel. And, um, you know, I think Lauren Hill makes you think, you know, when you're listening to her music, she lifts you up and makes you think. And let's take another example. My mind is just kind of going boop, boop, boop. Robin, mm-hmm. I love Robin's music. There's this ability to be sad and yet uplifting at the same time, you know, like. I've only heard like one Robin song. But- yeah, 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 yeah. And it's one of those things that it's like, she's talking about being in the corner, watching someone, you know, it's like, it's sad, yeah. but you don't even feel it because you're, well, Dua Lipa, same thing. She, you know, she kind of pulls from those pages. And that's sort of where the influence of like Edge came from, from those pages okay. of that. So Okay, I got it. What made you want to title it Edge? You know, I think for me, music always has a bigger meaning. It's meant to help. It's meant to uplift people. So... I think, you know, even you sharing that story at the very beginning, you know, talking about your day and what it was like and how you, you know, you, you looked to me, you. it brought you to a different place than where you were maybe 10 minutes ago. And so for me, when I thought my album and edge, I wanted it to be um, the title because it's also, as I think I mentioned to you in our, in our first exchange, it's an acronym for every day, give everything, you know, And so for me, I I know that it held a lot of meaning for me and the song and what it meant. And it was sort of like the anchor, I think, in the in the EP, because there's a lot about talking about relationships, relationships with like others, whether it's like romantic or friendship, but then also the relationship with self. And, you know, I, I again, going back to how music is a gift and it's meant to help. I found that Edge was just like the way that I wanted to anchor the whole album was like on that song with like both being triumph triumphant and joyful but also sad you know some of the content is sad in in the in the verses um but it also ends up being i think a really powerful anthem so right you totally reminded me of like the when you said the acronym i was like okay but then in the back of my mind i was wondering like is it does it mean she's on edge or what what could this possibly be you know yeah, no, it's, uh, it's um, you know, my track that I did, I wanted to be really vulnerable about what it is to, do, to live in a day in the life of like depression, and anxiety. And there are days in those zones where you can barely get out of bed, you know, and um, there's can be a lot of shame in that and in, in feeling like you're not contributing much to society. You're not contributing much to the day or your goals. But in my journey with that, you know, there are days where I recognize that was going to be the victory of the day. That was my giving everything that I had in that day, you know. And so that's where the acronym really comes from, where it's like every day, give everything. So maybe for myself, like I said, it was that taking a shower, making myself a meal. That was a huge victory. Maybe for the next really? person, it's like being the CEO of a company, Fortune 500 deal, you know, whatever it is. But I think that in that moment, I really wanted to take the pressure off of what I thought victorious was, especially dealing with mental health. So that's kind of where the whole song really comes from. No, I, I definitely feel that, um, you know, mental health as, uh, as times progress, you know, become more of a safe topic and more of a accepted thing. Um, you probably grew up at a time where it wasn't as accepted and it wasn't, you know, as popular to say, oh, I'm going to therapy where, 
you know, now I encourage yeah. therapy. I've seen a great therapist for on and off for over 10 years. You know what I mean? So um, I don't even have a question right now. I'm just like <laughs> spitting. Yeah. Um, like, let it sit. I think there's sometimes those moments in life where you just let it sit, you know? Uh, hey, when's your birthday? Uh, October 9th. Hey, I sweet. Am, uh, I'm October 14th. I mean, Libra. Yeah, I was like, I, I knew the question was going. <laughs> A Libra. For sure. Yeah, we're the best, aren't we? The 360 music video. That mm. looked so incredibly beautiful. Tell me how that came about. Yeah, you know, um, I think when I do the first of something, I always want it to be the most like eye-catching that it could be. So that was my first ever music video. And I will give total props to the idea of the 360 to my director. I like brought the concept of like the song and I just said like, what do you see? What do you envision? I knew that I wanted to like have my parents in it. I knew that I wanted to incorporate like my silly sort of dancing in it. And he's the one that took it to the next step and one and thought, oh my God, cool idea already. Let's do it. So that's, um, Kind of where it came from and, and it was so fun then to interact with other people to show it to them because you know everybody's attention span is so short but then you get to be like but look move your phone and then they're like oh my god like that you know that reaction oh, yeah. of watching that is so interesting and different so i thought it was like a really fun way to like catch people's attention you know yeah oh yeah absolutely i feel like you know in a day and age where with music you have to have visuals with it it's like that like captivates you even more you know yeah absolutely another visual um the animated one the eight bit one um tell me how did that come about yeah so um into the blue is honestly like one of my favorite tracks and currently it's actually doing the best for streams actually out of all the songs so far the theme works very the track is based on an island a pixel animated island and honestly it really came from a place of i was just listening to the song over and over again in the beginning that like mm -hmm. all of a sudden it started to just sound arcade like to me yeah and then all of a sudden this imagery started coming to mind and i was like oh like pixel like oh like maybe like queen denise like this could be fun and it, it really just started off as like me trying to make like ig stories that were like more interesting than just like a post picture and then with covid and having all the time in the world i was like hmm, maybe i can actually make an entire music video so i learned how to like do animation and I just created all the pixel characters, created them myself, created every scene that you see, every movement you see is a, another image that I like created. And it's like, just honestly, like using the tools that I, I movie and preview, I just made an animated uh, pixel music video that I thought would be really fun and interesting for the audience to interact with. And we all grew up for the most part playing like a playstation or i'll age myself mm -hmm. like a nintendo 64 or whatever right so like that pixel arcade vibe i felt like no matter who you are whether you know you have the newest like playstation you're still going to understand like the arcade feel and vibe and, and still enjoy it yeah and so for me i also thought about my niece and nephew and thinking like oh i want them to engage in this too you know they're five and three so i thought mm -hmm. this could be really fun for like every single age group um and then it just felt great to be able to say like, hey, I did this myself. You know, I created this myself. It was my story and so forth and built from there. Yeah, that's so sick. When you said um, the PS1 and N64 era, that's like totally my vibe. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. I got racing, man. Yeah, I got a lot of like shirts in my closet that are like PS1 and 64 Dreamcast. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just childhood. It's just like nostalgic to me forever. Absolutely. I remember being at Costco begging our dad to buy us an N64 and how good it felt to bring it home and then beat every level with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll age myself again. I never had an N64 to myself. I just just like friends and cousins had it. But um, I remember they let you rent it from Blockbuster. and I, oh. We did that one time and I was so happy. 
Yes, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. At PS1 though. RIP Blockbuster. Pour 40 out for Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool, cool. All right. So I wanted to know, Denise, what inspires you to write? Hmm. That's a great question. Thank you. I think. I don't know, you know, I think it depends for me. I mostly have written from personal experience for this EP. I'm kind of like thinking sure about what I want to do. And a part of me wants to really like listening more outside of just myself and go, oh, if I hear a story going, how would I interpret that in song? Whether it like happened to someone or saw it in the news or let's say you're watching a movie and there's like a moment that sort of like sticks out to me, just kind of like paying attention to the, like that little gut feeling that I have, which will be Mm -hmm. like, oh, there's a song behind that. So even like, um, yeah, just some of the tracks that I did, you know, they kind of maybe spun off because somebody was having conversation with me and I was like, oh, that'd be like a great way to say that. So a single that I released before this EP called Lesser Love, that's really what happened. I was just having a conversation with a friend and he was just telling me, uh, giving me some brotherly advice, being like, you know, sometimes in life, maybe you're being protected from like a lesser love. And I remember it was, it was like, ding, ding, ding. It's like light went off and I was thinking, oh, there's a song behind that. And I knew that I had to sort of sit with it for a little bit to kind of like pull apart the pieces. And, and, and I just knew that there was something there behind that. So like conversations, like I said, um, but yeah, mostly I think it's just like personal stories at this point, for sure, are a big one. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That doesn't like surprise me, you know, it is the best source of material is your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Okay. So you got any like interests and hobbies outside of music? No, I only do music. No. <laughs> <laughs> Super focused. In this game. Yeah, yeah, I'm real. I'm a real musician. <laughs> um honestly, I'm I'm pretty chill, you know. I think that. I love people, which sounds like really basic to say, but honestly, like good food, good conversation. I love fashion, love culture, love self-development, like just always learning how to be better, you know, grow myself and grow those around me. Those are the things that really bring me life. You know, I think COVID obviously has caused us to slow down in many other ways, but at the end of the day, those things still remain, you know, I love a good movie all that fun stuff for sure um these normally are what i call the rapid fire questions but since you kind of touched on them um favorite food and favorite movie damn oh uh, favorite movie ah, it's so hard just the one that comes to mind i love school of rock i love jack black yeah that's one of mine too uh, yeah let's yeah. rock let's rock today um <laughs> just really appreciate that Stick it and to the and right now, for whatever reason, for, yes, <laughs> yo, I'm gonna not be able to answer any more questions because I'm just gonna be like, "You're not hardcore." <laughs> you're not unless hardcore. You live hardcore. Unless Anyways. you live hardcore. With the legend of the wrench was way hardcore. Was way hardcore. <laughs> yeah, yes. that part's got to be the preview for this episode now. <laughs> okay for food it would be uh, the first thing that just came to mind was pupusas which is like a traditional okay. salvadorian food but i love chicken wings let's just put it there chicken wings God, and fries all day, wings. all day all day wings and fries lemon pepper wings oh Gaius. yes damn wow okay Thank cool you. yeah now on your YouTube channel, I was watching your Say My Name cover from Destiny's Child, Ooh. and you killed that. Um, yeah. I was w- just wondering, you've done, like, quite a bit of live performances, you know, for an upcoming artist. Um, what kind of crowds do you rock, you know, pre-COVID? Yeah, so um, I've been fortunate enough to perform, yeah, live a lot, and especially in Saskatchewan, in my province that I'm from, had a lot of opportunities that way, so... Um, 
whether it was like a, a bar. So like that one that you saw that was my first live headlining show, my first show that I was the headliner of. So it was extra special. And that song and that cover is probably my later. Still always try to choose that song because it always goes off and people are so excited to be like, and yeah, yeah, with me. <laughs> yeah, put the so, mic in the crowd. And like. Yeah, yeah. The performer in me really like goes woo, way up. And I like to pull my inner like diva Beyonce. And that's yeah. Really- you just you're it goes from you being like in the dressing room beforehand just singing into the hairbrush to like okay yeah. i'm ready to sing yeah. a song for 20 years <laughs> yeah and I, I try to go like not hardcore but like really just trying to pull that stank face in and just like really connect <laughs> stank face in. yeah it's so fun and people you know i think especially the province that i'm from they don't get a lot of pop or music happening so when they do hear it live they're like freaking out because they're like oh my god like it's more like predominantly rock country or folk so for them to hear like say my name like so fun do you have a band you regularly play with uh in saskatchewan i did yeah so that band that you saw at the say my name or most of the live performances that you saw on youtube they would all actually be the band that I rocked with. They really helped kind of ground me and make, like allow me to have the opportunities that I had as consistently. So um, I'm just gonna like share. Yeah, two of my highlights was like opening up for Boney M, if you're familiar with them. I've been hearing that name a lot lately, so I gotta check them out now. Oh yeah, it's cause they're like an old 70s band, disco era, but they started for whatever reason, Rasputin is like trending on TikTok. So I think that's why people are thinking it. Um, and then have you got to open up for Questlove, which is super dope as well. Yeah, I saw that. But yeah, they were like my regular band. Right now, I don't have a regular band just because like with the move, I moved like three months before COVID hit. And so it hasn't been like possible to really do live music in my province. And the band that I would work with are just like here, just like people that I can kind of try to put together that are like local and and really talented. So nice. Okay, how was it performing with Questlove? Uh, so we just got to perform before Questlove. We didn't get to perform right. with him. Yeah, but it was just a dope. He was just a DJ set. Um, so my biggest goal was just to be able to have him hear at least like one of my songs. And so he kind of came in for like the last 30 seconds. So like one of my songs and that felt like a big win and I was excited. Are there any like artists or producers you'd want to collaborate with? Yeah, absolutely. I think about like pop. I would love to work with like Mark Ronson. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I would love to sit down and write with like, uh, let's see, SZA or Frank Ocean. Those would be super cool. Um, I love an artist, her name is Nao, N-A-O. And I'm just really inspired by like her vocals and just her overall live performance is just so full of joy and fun and I just love how connected she is to her her audience so she would be a huge like bucket list for me I love I love her so much (laughs) oh okay hey do you think we're gonna get another Frank album in the next three to five years you know to be honest with you I think Frank needs to take all the time he needs because I mean his brother did get killed in a car crash last year so I'm not rushing Mm -hmm. Frank at all you know Kendrick Lamar, however, he needs to drop yeah. this year. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I think it's just different type of art, you know? Yeah. Frank, Frank, I think there's a simmer to the way that he creates that we all just know and accept, you know? And when he does gift us with something, we take it. Yeah. Uh, also, like, his projects represent time periods. 
you know, you're automatically like mm -hmm. transported back to like what you were going through during Nostalgia Ultra, during Channel Orange, during Blonde. Yeah. Yeah. Such cultural influence. So Denise, is there anything else you want the people out there to know about you? Um, there'll be more music. That's for sure. I am looking forward to releasing more singles and uh, working towards my full album. I am definitely going to be writing in Spanish as well. So I'm looking forward to like, connecting with a wider audience as well. And um, I've never done that before. So I'm excited to push myself. And definitely, definitely, definitely when COVID be over, <laughs> touring for sure. That's my happy place is to be live, performing, meeting people, connecting, you know, so That'll definitely be at the top of my priority list once, uh, you know, that's allowed. Yeah. Prior to COVID, were you on the road a lot? Um, we're doing a lot more showcases. Yeah. Yeah. My goal Lumber for 2020 was to tour after the EP. So it was supposed to be a quicker timeline. Yeah. So I hope 21 and yeah, it's probably gonna be 2022 that I'll be able to do some more um, touring. Hopefully in the States would be amazing as well as Europe. I would love to be able to connect with like the R and B hubs. Okay, cool. Cool. I'm excited for you. Where All are you right. at? Where am You're I in the at? States? Yeah, I'm in You're LA. Ah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. LA, LA. <laughs> so I'm in this. You ever heard of Glendale? I'm in this little suburb yes. that sits on top of Glendale called Montrose. Okay. My family lives in Palmdale. Oh, for sure. Okay. It's like mm -hmm. up the up the five to the one eighteen or something. Palmdale is where Afro Man's from. Let's take a couple Instagram questions. Um one person wanted to know how did you get verified with only 3000 followers? Classic. That's a classic question. Um mm. yeah, so I got verified because you do have to go through a form and through a process. You do need to show your like accolades and what you've done. So the press that I had received through my music, through like the awards that I've won and things like that. Um, there is a company as well that, you know, does verification, but even then it's like a, like a legit Facebook partner. You still have to apply and, and show that you've done the work. Um, you can't just like apply and just not have done anything. Um, so through the press that I've done, like I said, and the music things that I had done, that's how I was able to get it. So. All right. Well, there that's you have it. I, yeah. I just learned something actually with that because I've kind of been in my mind. I'm like, they're never going to give me that blue, blue check, like straight up. <laughs> but um, if you can apply for it and then show them what press you've done and show them like what evidence you've done, maybe at some point, I've seen There's a few a on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I've seen a few yeah. artists who have had who have um like my friend Amir says nothing. He has under 10k followers and he has a blue check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me that's how it works. Like I am sure there's probably other ways that people do it, but it definitely is something that you still have to like show, right? That you've done stuff like basically your Google Google name that people are looking to know who you are and yeah. Googleable name. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. All right, Denise. Why should people care about Denise Valle? Wow, that's a hard question. You don't have to, you know. I think it's just like it's a choice with all the music that's out there. It's going to be a choice. And if it connects with you, that's awesome. And if it doesn't, that's also okay, too. Because that's the beauty of music, you know. There's so many genres. There are, like, niche, niche genres that only need to be, like, 
10%, let's say of the world would like, but for whatever reason, that 10% has now that gift of that genre to do. So for me, it's like, if you connect with the pop R&B and soul music, maybe this will be your flavor. And if it's not, that's okay. And that's actually really freeing as an artist to know that I don't have to be everything for every person. But really, you know, I was just watching it like a TikTok video and a girl just being like, why can't we just be satisfied with like the 12 people that like liked your video? Those are 12 real humans that took the time to like your video. And somehow I don't see the 12, I see the 3000 that didn't. And I'm super guilty for that. You know, all of us are, and I'm sure, yeah. you know, as you're growing your channel and everything like that. So I think for me, you know, to answer that question, it's just like, it's a choice. If you do awesome, like sincere, awesome. And if you don't, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely a better way to look at it. You like actually put my mind on like a greater path to like, I'm going to look at it like from a more half full, like, hey, you know, even if it's 25 likes, that's like 25 people who are like, hey. <laughs> yeah and took I think time you know, to see it you, like you know you have like four thousand followers those are people who actively chose to follow you you know and maybe out of those there's like the 10 percent that are your super fans and that's really important to like talk to them you know connect with them so they're they're, they're going to be the ones that are put that people will look to to be like oh have you heard about palm like yo i really love his style like i really love like, I'll just throw this back at you. Like, I love the fact that you use the emoji guy to do <laughs> your reviews. I was like, that made me want to follow you, to be honest. Not just because you are doing an interview with me, you know. There was something about your content that I found really intriguing. I was like, yo, that's such a smart way to engage the audience. Still show you and be creative. So, like, props to you on that. Hey, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, you know, with the little emoji character, um, I didn't even like intend on being like, what am I trying to say? I didn't even like do that to like try to be cool. Like I just teach yeah. myself new things every day, you yeah, know, yeah. And when you're on camera, but like, you know, sometimes you got to go to an appointment or sometimes I like my mom will like call me or I got to go do something then you'd be like, oh, shit, I got to put one more thing in the video. That was, like, perfect. So I don't have to, like, okay, adjust the lighting. Make sure you put your clothes, yeah. put your shirt back on. Like, try yeah. to look cool again. It's just, like, throw that little cartoon. No, and I love it because he changes each time. And I yeah. thought that was really intriguing, too. Like, it's not just one style. Like, honestly, that was, like, props to you. That's, like, Thank for you. me, that was, like, I'm going to follow for that reason. Yeah. As a kid, I wanted to be a cartoonist. So, you know, uh, kind of weird. Yeah, like Libra twinsies, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, like I got hella characters like on my phone and on my Apple Watch that I'm gonna be like incorporating into different things and different musical reactions. So yes, yeah, stick around, you'll see. Yeah, it'll be cool to do some merch or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I've been, I'm the laziest fucker ever, but like, um, yeah, I got one piece of merch out right now, just a regular t-shirt with the logo, but I want to make more, but like, yeah. I just don't, I just, I know how, I know who to talk to, it's just like, I already do everything, yeah. so it's like, I don't know, yeah. Uh, it's definitely hard being like an entrepreneur, you know? Yeah. Maybe down um, the road. No, I'm not even trying to, I'm not even trying to put it off. Like you get some, some buttons, some lanyards, more, I already got stickers, your keychains, And then like, mm -hmm. I don't even want to like each soul separately. Like people can purchase goodie bags and I'll just have like back when it's safe, I'll just have like stuff to pass out at shows. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Off top. All right. Um, you got any more questions for me? um what inspired you to do what you're doing okay um you know what I've always been into like uh independent music underground hip-hop uh, you know obscure music this and that um and my dad runs a music entertainment site called the urban buzz 
So just growing up in a household around, you know, that music publication mm -hmm. environment. Um, and then in college, writing for the arts and entertainment section of the paper. Um, I was just like, hey, why don't I like start a brand and, you know, start like a music magazine. And then I just from right before graduation to this day, I never put it down. Yo, that's so dope. Yeah, thank you. Can I ask you. you one more question? Ask as many as you want. It's Palmcast, so, you know, it's this uh, is What keeps you encouraged when you feel discouraged about your, like, oh your creative Oh, my God. This dreams. is so relevant. Um, honestly. What keeps you encouraged to continue to do this? Damn. What keep People just hitting me up. Random people. Talking to people from all over the world. Just talking, connecting with artists and finding great music and then just like, um, you know, if I can make a piece of content or write an article about somebody and then they retweet it and like reach out to me and then starting a relationship. Because the truth is, it's the fact that um, I'm building a community. That's why in every video mm -hmm. I'm like, what's up, palm tree? Because I'm talking to like a family tree, you know, a community of artists and creators and um fans and other like-minded people. So I really want to bring together people with like-minded taste who, you know, found different music or different people to work with through this platform. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what like motivates me to keep doing it. Cause girl, let me tell you, like lately I'd be like, fuck this shit. I'm so yeah. over it. Like, Please. Please. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah. you know, I'm still like, I'm a, I'm not afraid to say it. Like I'm applying for jobs right now. Like you know, and I've worked at various things in the music industry, various things not in the music industry, but at times after it'll be six years next week. So yeah, yeah, six years Monday. Um, the anniversary is March 1st. So it, there's there are times where I'm like, yeah, I am am ready to move on. But also, mm -hmm. like, I don't really I don't have to stop. I don't want to I don't want to stop, quit or whatever. It's just like. Yeah. I don't know if, you know, God, this is not the last stop on the train for me, but like, hey, you know, whatever God has in store, but until then, you know, this, this is, yeah. can be my contribution, you know, make a platform for independent artists and like, you know, mm -hmm. I can't imagine my life without music. So and like, I, yeah, it's cool to like connect with a lot of unsigned and independent artists. Yeah. I think there's like that connection about the hustle, right? And the paving your own path that we all just get, you know? And it's like the, the road leveled, but we, our tunnel vision, we're like, no, let's keep trying, you know? And I think what fuels that is the community aspect of all. Yeah, yeah, it is definitely the community aspect because you know, people will follow me because like I'll post about one particular artist and they, yeah. they may come from like, one you know, the SoundCloud rap scene. And they're, you know, but many of my supporters are into like Suicide Boys and Puya. I don't know if you've like heard of like rappers like that, but, you know, and then they'll see me post like a you or, you know, another <laughs> like, you know, young lady, like pop singer type, like you'll get this. This is really just my world, like everybody in between from like I'm trying to bridge together like different scenes yeah you know. I actually had someone reach out to me straight up just because they saw you post me and then they went yo your music is amazing I can't wait to hear your palm cast I think that was still reach out to give you props to be like oh yeah I can't wait um, for that you know I think so. I saw my man Mike Media he uh tapped in I think he, I saw that he followed you. So yeah, he does do a similar media platform. We've done a little bit of work together and we're going to do more stuff in the future. So Mike, I know you're listening to this. Shout out to you, young brother. We will get up and do some more. And Denise, yeah, yeah. Is one or two. I just, uh, just encourage you, you know, I know this uh, journey of creativity and the artistic journey is not easy, but it definitely helps, you know, these little moments where we all get to connect and remind ourselves of our whys and what, what we're doing, you know? Yeah. So I appreciate it for real. Oh, no. Yeah, of course. Great to be appreciated. To like right. Listen to the, to the songs and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
everybody make sure you guys stream edge from denise Valle. uh denise one more time let them know where they can follow you and stream your music at yeah so i would say i'm most active on instagram but it's denise Valle underscore and my music is up on all streaming platforms whether you do youtube or spotify apple music amazon uh, but you can find me on like Twitter, Facebook and TikTok. So I love being able to connect with you all. So please, you know, never be shy to reach out via DM. Love to have it be a two way conversation. Absolutely. That's how it should be. All right, Denise. Well, thank you so much for coming to Palmcast. We do appreciate you. Um, my name is Dylan, but everybody just calls me Palm. Check us out at prettyawesomelitmusic.com, youtube.com slash palm official. Hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, Dylan is palm. And thank you again, Denise. Yeah, so nice to meet you, Dylan. All right, nice to meet you. Hit me up when you come to LA. I will, for sure. All right, have a good night. Okay, bye. All right.